Hi there, good morning. Welcome back to what is turning out to be a very warm double decker <laughs> bus here in Brighton. Uh, myself and Kyle here all morning building up to what is a massive, massive game at the Amex this evening. England taking on Norway in Group A. Delighted to say Esme Morgan, Karen Bardsley still here with us this morning. Um, we're going to look at this morning's newspapers now and take a look at some of the back pages. Of course, loads of focus on tonight's massive game. Uh, a lot of outlets, as you can imagine, have picked up on this war of words between <laughs> Serena Beegman and the Norway head coach. I know we, we spoke about it a little bit earlier, but if anything, this is it's a good thing for the women's game, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, people are asking the right questions. You know, people are taking an interest, but um, let's hope that we actually give them something more to talk about just than, you know, a few, you know, bombs thrown into a press <laughs> conference, you know what I mean? Having, yeah. Oh, I was just going to say, I mean, having that kind of coverage of the two managers, having the war of words, as it's been said as well, it can only be a positive in a way because it'll get more eyes onto the sport and people like that, don't they, within sport? They like rivalry. Yeah, everyone loves a soap opera, it's just the <laughs> drama. So I think whenever you've got sort of back and forth between managers, between players, everyone latches onto a rivalry. So I think it does add that extra element of interest where people are like, oh, what's going on there? So people might tune in because they want to see if Serena and the Norway coach are going out in the game. So yeah. whatever well, gets I people mind saying watching, that. Yeah. It, it doesn't matter. It's then about the show that the players put on to keep people engaged and make them want to come back and watch again and uh, of course you've got to sit here and say yeah well pressure is on England that's not that's not something out the blue is it of course it is they're playing in a home tournament they're also one of the favorites as well they've been playing so well leading up to this but for England it's very much how they deal with that pressure this evening yeah I think you're right I mean both teams are fairly evenly weighted in terms of the threats that they both um, you know yeah the, the, the trouble that they can cause yeah. you know so I think Statistically, England probably pips Norway ever so slightly in terms of the depth, of, you know, from front to back, you know, um, throughout the team. So, yes, of course, all eyes are going to be on England as a, as a host of, of a European championship. But intrinsically, I think the, the girls and the team are going to be feeling more pressure from what they put on themselves as opposed to, you know, what's coming from from the outside. So um, it's 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 hard to say that they're not feeling the pressure because obviously they all want to do well but yeah I don't know I, I just think that they're kind of keeping themselves to themselves and keeping very focused on what it is that they need to do and what their roles are well let's move on then let's uh, focus on the sun they're looking at Ellen White and comments that she's made regarding Harry Kane she's praised the way Kane responded to pressure he was going through uh, during Euro 2020 going into the tournament do you see her making a similar response on the pitch this tournament Karen well, yeah, I mean, like the tournament's just started, you know, and again, you got to keep in mind that she was coming back off of, you know, a spell of COVID, you know, so we all know that being poorly like affects how we feel every day. So it's going to affect her performance. So you'd like to think that she's going to find her, her flow, you know, if she gets the opportunity to play in this next game. Um, but yeah, you know, like we know what she's capable of doing. You know, she's a big tournament player, so she she'll... She'll bang home loads of goals. Like I feel very confident that she's going to get, um, you know, she'll bag a few at least, you know, if she gets the opportunity to play throughout the rest of this tournament. So, you know, th there's an element of, of the fact that it's not just about scoring, you know, like being a number nine, you're, you're leading the line, you're leading the press, like you're also kind of like a talisman in the team. So there's a lot more than just you know, making sure that you're hitting the back of the net. You look at Ada Hegerberg the other day, you know, she was just creating space, creating assists for, for other players. So there's a lot more than just hitting the back of the net. Yeah, it's funny because we were saying upstairs, weren't we, that everyone's so focused on stats all the time and records. But maybe in a way it's inevitable that we do talk about players like Ellen White and like Harry Kane. Yeah, I think people like those players are who the team look to in moments of need to come up with a goal and when they've got such good supply from wingers, when they're not scoring, people ask questions, what, what's happening, are they out of form, blah, blah, blah. But I think, as you said, people need to maybe connect the dots between Ellen's fitness, has she been ill? Yes, she's missed a couple of the warm-up games, so maybe just is going to take a minute to um, get back into her rhythm, find her feet, and then she'll go back to her goal-scoring ways. But I think 
we need to take into account the build-up she's had. It's not been ideal preparation for her, but as KB said, I think she's someone you can rely on to turn that around and refine her form. As players, is it hard to ignore that kind of outside noise and the, and the chatter going on, especially when you're involved in a major tournament? I imagine it must be hard, though. It's not. No? It's not, because you're in your own little bubble. Like You can control like what you hear and what you see and things like that. So you're switching off social media and you're basically having the same conversations with family and friends and you can tell people that you don't really want to know like what's going on on the outside so yeah you can't avoid it um and no I think one's expecting you to score though KB <laughs> <laughs> very true well, not yeah. anymore that yeah, not anymore anyway yeah, yeah. so um yeah perhaps not but yeah there's, a, there's always another element of pressure I think that for me every time you go onto the pitch you put way more pressure and expectation on yourself than anyone else could ever do Especially when Esme's saying that England will win. I'm sure they're watching Good Morning Euros, uh, the entire <laughs> team, so they'll be seeing that and the pressure that comes with that. All right, let's move on then uh, to look at the Telegraph. They've highlighted Norway's front three and what England must do better this evening. Is this hype around Norway's attacking options justified, Esme? Absolutely, yeah. I think Caroline Graham, Hansen and Hegerberg are probably, for me, two of the best players in the world in their positions. And... Guru Wrighton's not bad either. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Wicked left foot now. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, they've got very strong and all three players offer something different. Graham Hansen's so fluid in a dribbling, so creative and um, providing so many opportunities and Hegerberg will be frustrated that she didn't get a hat-trick so I imagine she's a ticking time bomb just waiting to explode and uh, score lots of goals but hopefully she delays that. <laughs> well, it's interesting because her, her post-match interview after the Northern Ireland game she said I'm saving up my goals for England basically. So no surprise and That's I'm sure the England enough. players will be you know, well aware of, of what she can do out there. No, it's it's a, it's listen. It's a tasty fixture, isn't it? You know, I'm really really looking forward to watching the game tonight. Um, but yeah, as as Esme rightly says, like the, they have a, an absolutely lights out front three. But the same thing has to apply to to them that everyone you know is pressuring England, right? They have to make sure that they're on form on the night. And um, there's no doubt in my mind that there will be a good supply of crosses and deliveries into the box and final third entries but at the end of the day um things could not fall right you know like obviously millie bright's brilliant in the air we've got lucy bronze who's an excellent 1v1 defender who's got the athleticism to take you know um all the pressure up and down the pitch wherever she is so yeah ultimately i think it's it's going to be a really evenly matched game yeah so then for england let's look at it from their perspective how do they deal with this front three? Because there's been so much talk about the defence. Leah Williamson, will she be playing in defence? you think we'll see that again tonight? Yeah, potentially. I have I think if we go through the predicted 11s, I've put her in midfield and had Alex Green would move back just for an extra bit of security in midfield to hopefully reduce the amount of times the front three are getting the ball in the first place. So I think half of it is going to be stopping the the supply to the front three um, by getting the press right higher up the pitch and organising um, in that sense. Um, and then once they do get there, it's being organised, getting bodies in centrally to protect the goal and just having numbers in the penalty area to try and cut out crosses, block shots um, and just put bodies on the line. Agreed. It's going to be so important to make sure we're getting up up to the ball um, a little bit quicker than we did against Austria. I think you started to see some really big gaps start forming, um, particularly as the game went on and those substitutions were made that they just had far too much time on the ball. Um, so, you know, as, as Esme rightly says, like it starts from the front with the press. You know, if we can win the ball higher at the pitch and, and delay that, um, the, the balls into, you know, their, their front three, I think that's going to be a huge, huge... Um, tactical favor for us um so yeah i also did put leah in the midfield as well to, to provide that stability and that security in front of the back four as well so um yeah i think that's probably the best approach to be honest is just try and keep the ball away from <laughs> <laughs> from that front three from the front three as much as possible yeah pretty simple right 